Hello and welcome everyone to our YouTube channel Drishti IS English. My name is Pragya and in today's episode of Probability Primer, we are going to discuss a very important topic that can be a game changer in the upcoming Tripura elections. The title of our today's discussion is Demand for Greater Tripura Land. In this discussion, we will be studying about the following points of discussion. Firstly, we will understand the background of our today's topic or the context in which we are having this discussion today. Then we will see what is this demand for greater Tripura land. We are also going to trace the origin of this demand. We are also going to see the constitutional provisions in this regard. We are also going to see has the demand been addressed by the Indian government or not. And in the end, we are going to see a practice question for your prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination. Now, let us understand the background of the today's topic. So, if I talk about the background of our today's topic, there is this political alliance that has gained popularity in the state of Tripura. And this alliance is known as the Tripura Motha Alliance. So, this alliance is known as the Tripura Motha Alliance. And it has fluttered the people with the de demand for a separate state known as the Greater Tripura Land. And this will definitely be a game changer in the upcoming Tripura elections as it has already, uh, you know, led to the victory in the 2018 elections. So, this demand had already led to a victory uh, in 2018 elections and this demand has resurfaced again by this Tripura Motha Alliance. Now, let us understand what is this demand for a greater Tripura land. So, what is happening in Tripura is the indigenous people are demanding a separate state of greater Tripura land for the indigenous communities of the northeastern state. We know that in the northeastern states, the tribal populations is more. So, there is an ongoing conflict almost since independence between the tribals and the non-tribal. And let me explain to you the origin of this demand first. So, the origin of this demand came when Tripura was a kingdom ruled by a Manikya dynasty from the late 13th century until the signing of the instrument of accession with the Indian government on October 15, 1949. But let me go back before this instrument of accession was signed. What happened in the 1941 census? 1941 census. The ratio of the tribal and the non-tribal people were almost 50 is to 50. So, they were almost equal in their population. But what happened after this? Uh, another census was conducted and it was found out that the tribal uh, population has decreased to mere 37 percent. And hence, there was a uh, insecurity in the tribal people of the region that they are now being governed by the non-tribal people. They will now be suppressed by the non-tribal people. And this insurgency, uh, this uh, conflict grew so much that it led to the 1980 armed insurgency in Tripura. Insurgency in Tripura. So, the main cause of this 1980 armed insurgency in Tripura was the uh, clash between the tribal population and the non tribal population. The demand mainly stems from the change in the demographics of the state. So, what happened was there was this uh, ongoing immigration from the erstwhile East Pakistan and there was a displacement of Bengalis from the region and th therefore the tribal communities felt even more threatened by the non-tribal communities. So, the indigenous communities were reduced to a minority due to this displacement of Bengalis from the erstwhile East Pakistan between 1947 and 19. 71. So, now they are what they are saying that give us a separate state and these indigenous communities is dominated by a community known as the Tripuris or the Tipra and the Tiprasas and they are the largest communities uh, present tribal communities present currently in Tripura and hence they are demanding this separate state of greater Tripura land. If you ask me ma'am, what are the other reasons that tribal communities in the northeastern states felt threatened? So, the other reasons also include, there was this joint forum and this joint forum which was constituted by the government to analyze the situation of the tribal communities in the northeastern states, especially Tripura. 
has also pointed out that the indigenous people have not only been reduced to a minority but also have been dislodged from land reserved for them by the penultimate king of the Manikya dynasty, Bir Bikram Kishore Debar Burman. So, what happened this uh, last uh, king also took away their land and they were uh, not only they were in minority but they also lost their lands by the policies of this last Manikya dynasty king. So, they felt even more threatened now. So, after independence, this demand has not subdued. It has continued to resurface again and again, again and again. Now, let us see the constitutional provisions under which the parliament is empowered to create a new state. They are article 2, firstly, talks about the power of the parliament to create new states by law. Then there is article 3, which talks about the alteration of boundaries or addition of uh, uh, areas or alteration of areas of the existing states. So, this uh, article 2 talks about creation of a new state or admission of a new state in the uh, Indian Union and this article 3 talks about alteration of boundary or changing of name or formation of new states. So, this was the constitutional provisions in this regard. So, parliament is empowered under uh, the Indian constitution to create new states. Now, let us understand has the demand been addressed by the government. So, what is happening is there is this constant tussle between the uh, uh, tribal people who are there who represent themselves through various alliances and uh, there is this central government as well. So, they keep on uh, having a tussle between them. We saw this tussle in the Nagaland as well, but they uh, attain truce, the central government and the Nagas people's front attain truce. So, if I talk about the efforts by taken by the central government, the central government has constituted the Tripura Tribal Areas Autonomous District Council under the Sikh schedule of our Indian constitution. We discussed the formation of autonomous district councils in a separate lecture of our Polity Primer series. I will provide you the link in the description and you can revisit and understand how are they created. So, it is not so that the central government has not addressed this demand of the tribal communities. It has addressed the demand of the tribal communities by creating this Tripura Tribal Areas Autonomous District Council. But the people are still not satisfied. Why? Because there is a constant threat to the tribal community. They feel threatened, they feel insecure. They feel that they are not adequately, adequately represented. So, that is why this uh, demand keeps on resurfacing. It resurfaced in, it first arose in the year 2009. Then again it arose in the 2018. And in 2021 uh, what happened was, this Tripura Motha, Tripura Motha, won the elections of this Tripura Tribal Areas Autonomous District Council. So, it swept the Tripura uh, Tribal Areas Autonomous District Council elections and won almost 70 percent of the seats. So, from then they uh, garnered the support of the people and started demanding again for a creation of a separate state known as the Greater Tripura Land. Greater Tripura Land envisages a situation in which the entire TTA a D C area will be a separate state. It also proposes dedicated bodies to secure the rights of the Tripris and other aboriginal communities living outside Tripra. So, it is not talking about the uh, tribal uh, uh, welfare of the tribal communities living in Tripra. It is also talking about the welfare of tribal communities who are there in other northeastern states such as Assam, such as Mizoram. So, this party is portraying that if we are elected, we will provide you development, we will provide you the rights which you are demanding and that is why this demand has resurfaced as the elections are just around the corner in Tripura. The TTAA DC which has legislative and executive powers covers nearly two thirds of the state's geographical area. So, this is also uh, important that this TTAA DC or the Tripura Tribal Areas Autonomous District Council covers almost two-thirds geographical area of the state of Tripura. 
and this party has already won the elections in 2021 and this is the party which has garnered people's support also so let us see what it does in this upcoming elections and how this demand for a greater tripura land will be flared up in the upcoming elections if you ask me the current position that tripura cm has denied creating a separate state and has denied the demand of creating a separate state of greater tripura land so with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion we have seen that why the tribal communities are facing threat in the northeastern states they are first first of all they are in minority then they were also dislodged from their lands then there is an ongoing tussle between the tribal and the non tribal community though tripura motha alliance is not portraying itself as a only a tribal party it is also talking about the welfare of the non tribal people but their hidden agenda is welfare of the tribal people as they have the support of the i ipft ipft indigenous peoples front of tripura or the largest indigenous people party in the tripura so they have a large public support as well as the support of this indigenous parties who are also talking about the demand for uh, a separate state as well as the welfare of the tribal communities so though this party is not portraying itself as a tribal party only but they have their greater tripura land as the sole aim of their election manifesto so this is what is happening currently in tripura and we have also understand that why the tribal community is demanding a separate state what has been done by the indian government to address this situation so let's wait and watch what happens in the tripura elections the result will decide if definitely if tripura motha is going to win the elections also as it has won the elections of the the tta adc or the tripura tribal autonomous district council then definitely if they come to power they will definitely re reassert this demand for creation of a separate state if you ask me ma'am what can be the way forward the way forward can be instead of you know demanding a separate state instead of saying that we want a separate state for the tribal indigenous people why don't you work for their development in the current state only why don't you increase education why don't you increase accessibility why not to increase the government initiatives for them and make sure that the government initiatives are actually benefiting people on the ground level so basically this all can be done the tribals can be uplifted the tribals can be made to interact with the other outside world they can be educated they can be given employment so instead of you know giving them a separate state what can the government instead do so it can work for the development and the upheaval of the tribal communities within the uh, tripura state as well instead of demanding a separate state for them because demanding a separate state is definitely not a solution you need to work at a ground level first if you really want to work for the people so if the party really and the indian government has been working for the Uh, northeastern states it is specifically has a po uh, policy known as act northeast act northeast so the government is also working for the development of tribal people it is not so that the tribal peoples are neglected by the government they have this specific uh, policy known as the act northeast which talks about the development of the tribal people so the uh, what can be the way forward they can currently instead of demanding a separate state they can in the current state only they can work for the development of the tribal people by working in synchronization with the central government now let us discuss a practice question for your prelims examination so the question is consider the following statements your statement number 1 is article 2 provides for the creation of new states your statement number 2 is a bill under article 3 shall only be introduced in the lok sabha which of the following statements given above is are correct your options are options a is one only option b is two only option c is both one and two and option d is neither one nor two kindly drop your answers in the comment box below now let us analyze the practice question for your mains examination so the question is discuss the constitutional provisions for the creation and abolition of the states in india with example so firstly you will write about uh, the article 2 and 3 of our indian constitution you will introduce how 
न्यू स्टेट्स आर क्रिएटेड एंड द पार्लियामेंट इज इम्पार्ट बाय लॉ टू क्रिएट न्यू स्टेट्स और टू एंड देन यू विल ऑल्सो एक्सप्लेन आर्टिकल थ्री विच टॉक्स अबाउट फॉर्मेशन ऑफ अ न्यू स्टेट ऑल्टरिंग द बाउंड्रीज देन चेंजिंग द नेम ऑफ स्टेट यू विल राइट ऑल ऑफ दिस देन यू कैन एज एन एग्जाम्पल यू कैन कोट द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द रिसेंट क्रिएशन ऑफ द तेलंगाना स्टेट एंड यू कैन कंक्लूड होलिस्टिकली दैट नो फ्रैगमेंटिंग द कंट्री इन टू वेरियस स्टेट इज नॉट द सोल्यूशन रैदर वी शुड वर्क टूवर्ड्स इन सिंक्रोनाइजेशन विद द कॉमन पीपल for the development of in the current state only so as per my opinion this can be a holistic conclusion which you can inculcate in your answer i hope this session was insightful for you if you have any feedback regarding the session kindly drop it in the comment box below if you found the today's discussion helpful and like the today's discussion kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates thank you